my name is Shreya, and I follow Jane, and I'm going to be reciting Namo Karmantra. Nam
his audience, his parish, was much wider, inclusive, comprehensive. Paul has been, for many of us, an inspiration, an energizer, a thinker, yes, but most of all, I think, a transformer. And that's why we believe the Golden Rule Award should be awarded to our colleague. Because in his practice, not just in his thought, but in his practice, Paul Eppinger has represented the Golden Rule and transformed the lives of people. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, Paul, we congratulate you on this board. And now I call on my colleague, the other Vice Chair of the Board, Phyllis. I'm trying to find a microphone for you, Paul. I'm going to bring this down to you. You go microphone, we come to you. And we're bringing you a microphone. Phyllis is coming. Could you please uh, make room for her? Thank you, Phyllis. I, uh, I thank you so much for this award. Uh, you may be seated. <laughs> I. Uh, until about a year ago, I was running two or three miles every day. And then I began to weaken in my body. I was diagnosed with ALS disease, the Lou Gehrig's disease. So I am extremely weak now. I cannot stand by myself. I cannot walk at all. But my heart and my soul is here with all of you. You all know because all of you here have received awards and been recognized in many ways. And you don't stand by yourself. You always are supported, loved by other people. So I have two <coughs> recognitions I want to make right now. One is my family. My wife, Sybil. <coughs> We've been married 57 years. She is my partner, my mentor, my lover. Uh, a couple of years ago, she was named the Arizona Mother of the Year. How nice. Also with me here is my daughter, Dr. Priscilla Eppinger. Dr. Eppinger, Dr. Priscilla Eppinger, is a professor of theology at a university in uh, Iowa and a seminary in Missouri. Another of my four daughters that is here is Dr. Monica Eppinger. Monica is a professor at St. Louis University School of Law. Her husband is here to my left, and they both could not be here for the entire parliament, but they flew in yesterday to be with us for this wonderful luncheon. The other group I want to 
introduce is the Arizona interfaith movement. We've got a couple of people here for the parliament, and a few of them are here for this lunch. I would like to ask members of the Arizona interfaith movement, please stand so you can be recognized. supporter is David Lincoln there at the head table. But it is such a privilege for us to be here and be a part of this. I learned the golden rule as a little tiny boy, five or six years old, in a little sunny school in western Kansas. On a good day, <laughs> That church had maybe 50 or 60 people in it on a Sunday. So there were very, very few of us. But I learned the golden rule there. And then 50 years ago, in a rather dramatic way, I learned a new, another scripture out of the uh, Christian scriptures, out of the book of the Revelation, Chapter 2, verse 10, it declares, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. I have tried for the last 50 years to be faithful. And I want to say to my brothers and sisters, as long as one out of five little children in America and millions of children around the world go to bed hungry every night. I want to be faithful. As long as tens of thousands of people are homeless and living on the streets, not only in America, but millions around the world, I want to be faithful. As long as in America thousands upon thousands of people still believe that all Muslims are terrorists, I want to be faithful and declare that is not so. Sikhs in different parts of this nation are attacked because of the uniqueness of their faith and their dress. I want to be faithful. As long as, as, long as Mormons, Mormon Christians in America are thought by many Protestants and many Catholics that they are second-class Christians, I want to be faithful. As long as the world feels the only way they can decide political differences is by war. I want to be faithful. Yeah. As long as America, the last count I heard was, we have 2,500 nuclear weapons, bombs, <coughs> and there are other nations around the world that have nuclear bombs, and we can wipe the human race off the face of the earth, I want to be faithful. You can see that I'm very, very weak. But I want to say this. 
as long as there is one ounce of blood flowing through my body, I want to be faithful. of this Lou Gehrig's disease, and the average lifetime is two to four years, and I have had it for two years now, the doctors say. So I don't know if I've got a couple of months or 10 years to live, but as long as my mouth and one of the last items that is affected, as long as my mouth can put together three or four intelligible words in a meaningful sentence, I want to give help and hope and love to all people in the world. I want to be faithful. scripture of each faith, there is a call to be faithful. I would invite all of us in this room to go back to our communities around the world with a new declaration that we all will be faithful. Thank you. In God, Allah, Yahweh, Baha'u'llah, Bless all of you. is the manifesto of interfaith movement. They worked one by one on their neighbors, called representative for senators in the state. And now you can have a golden rule number plate in Arizona. It will have a golden rule written on it. Well, it will cost you a few dollars extra. <laughs> and look at the wisdom of what Paul has done. Those few dollars are used in Arizona to guess promote what? <coughs> the golden rule. <laughs> so, so many people talk about golden rule. All the preachers like me preach about it. What Paul has done is institutionalize in a way that it will be a continued legacy. <clears throat> and that is something Parliament of the World Legions is going to provide you how to do what they have done in Arizona. By the way, nobody mentioned is a member of our Board of Trustees. <laughs> and. Uh, then you can implement that in your city. And I am pretty sure Arizona Interfaith Movement will be willing to have one of the person come to your city and state and guide you how to do that. Oh, even Paul is willing to go. <laughs> right. Tomorrow morning at 8.30. Tomorrow morning at 8.30. Arizona Interfaith Movement. 
Arizona Interfaith Movement. All right. Can anybody look for the room number, please, so I can make a complete announcement? Here is, you know, this parliament, we have made sure that there are trainings and workshops, and this is already part of it. So tomorrow morning, Arizona Interfaith Movement is going to present, and as soon as I have number, I will let you know. Okay, so building and funding a dynamic interfaith movement, and room 250F, it was E before, Time 8.30 a.m. 2.50 f as in Frank. Time 8.30 a.m. That is going to be the workshop. Thank you so much and check app all the time. Okay, so we are coming close to it. But one of the things which Paul, you would love to know. You are a beautiful Christian brother. I have been to your home and I have taken fruits of, uh, photos of fruits, and I have talked about your whole family to my family. I was never able to tell you about all of that. You know, a Muslim physician scientist in Chicago, uh, working essentially on one Jewish family who has hereditical uh, recurrence of Lugerot disease, has discovered the gene which causes that. <coughs> And Chicago Tribune says that this person might get a Nobel Prize on that discovery. And because of my friend Paul, I asked him how long it's going to take before it is translated into medicine and treatment. He said, I don't know, but it may take 10 to 15 years. But technology is advancing. So here is your interfaith, little interfaith, my love brother. You love interfaith. He's done his missionary life into mission of interfaith and golden rule. Thank you so much. Oh, God.